Hello, 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 and welcome to another Rangru cast, me Rangru, and today we are doing a 2v2 on Colum Belez. So, on the left hand side, in blue, playing as blue for, we got Orlando Bloom, <laughs> who's playing an infantry division, and no name, I really don't know why this keeps happening, I'm seeing this a lot in my own games, 15th Scottish Infantry. I think we're just going to call him Scott, because he's playing Scottish Infantry. Make it nice and easy. And on the right hand side, Red playing as Red Bull. We got Chivalrous, Ch Chivalrous Rully and Andronac, the anti... The anti what? The anti kebab, okay. Sure, whatever. I mean, I do like a good kebab every now and again, they are. Bloody wonderful. But we're going to get things going. Scottish guys going down top. Orlando going north. Uh, we got the SS or anti command up top. And Shivarus going down bottom. And this is the 1v1 version of the map, so we do have a lot less maneuver room compared to the 2v2 and 3v3 run. And it should start anytime soon. That'd be nice. As both sides are still prepping. And away we go. And you do have that Firefly up top off the bat, which will prove to be quite deadly foe. But there's not really much tank stuff to suit. And the Firefly only has AP shots, so you really do need tank stuff to suit. And we got the Soat into Factory. Fifth Scott bringing up his infantry, all the rifles and other guys that he can get. And we got stormtroopers storming into the point. As well as Panja grenadiers. And we got not one, not two, but three bloody mortars. Which is a lot of mortars, and that should help out substantially. As they just pin down everything. That MG42 getting hammered down below. Nothing along the uh, river pass. And up top here, it just seems like Orlando is going to be holding with a few AT guns and machine guns. The mortars are firing at around the mortars, and it's just mortar play back and forth. Chivarus has already lost quite a few units. Same river, uh, Scott. So it seems like not much ground will be taken so far. And the British or Scottish mortars are going to be forced to retreat. Seems like you can get a good bead on the uh, German one. I'm wondering if he even has line of sight. No, he doesn't have line of sight, well, I'm guessing. Oh, I don't have line of sight either. But it did drop a bomb. The bomb missed. And the Suka is going to get out scot free. As the spit finally comes in to try and set out about a little bit too late. And those mortars are just hammering away. And up top, nothing really, nothing really happening. I mean, he could probably make a decent push, I'd think, if he tried to attack to the left here. Mr. Anti Kebab. But is it, well, he has his firefly, but that's not. I can't really provide a fire support. It's nothing really tanky to shoot. And he's, he's moving it all the way around the back here. I'm wondering if he's going to bring it into the middle. And if he is, he has a uh, rather long pathway. I mean, it is a safe path, of course. And especially with a 200 point unit like that, it is better to be safe than sorry. But now I think about it, did all of that. Wouldn't it have just been faster to go off road? But hey, you know, there's no fuel in this game, so you don't have to worry about racing, racing your petrol. And the Vickers MGs are moving up, but Chivarus is holding on with his Panzer Grenadiers. And the Panzer Grenadiers are real bloody good infantry because they do have those two machine guns, while the rifles only get run. I think some Bren guns would help out quite a bit. That doesn't seem to be the case. And now Chivarus is not so chivalry. Uh, I don't know who he's trying to say. Uh, Mortars are getting pinned down as the two of its carriers go at it. Ranger support's trying to move up. But they just got completely pinned down. Almost pinned down. Maybe a good time to uh, just retreat them. <laughs> completely shot up on that road. So 
some more mortars. Just sort of thinking he's trying to hit some mortars again, but there's nothing really to hit. Or mortars to hit, that is. So he's bringing up more rifles. Uh, Ranger Lydia from Orlando helping down below. Spitfire interception of JU 87. But it did manage to drop its payload. No, it didn't. Never mind. It got stunned up beforehand. But it did get shot down. So that is a good kill. AT gun in a good position, knocking out the transport here. And it's looking pretty good for Blue. They are attacking rather hard into this factory area. I mean, the mortars definitely help out quite a bit. The nice thing about these carrier mortars is that they got a lot more ammunition compared to their non carrier counterpart. And then we've got the heavy mortar up top here. It's going to be firing array at this nice infantry class. And still at range, the support is in the open. You may, you may just want to fall out back. Supplies? Supplies would be a good idea. And Bluefall has managed to spot this uh, half track I can call an artillery. Some raising for something to come and blow it up. Probably mortars, but the mortars seem to be engaged in the middle of the factory. And yeah, we should be coming up to phase B soon. There's only two and a half minutes left. I'm trying to keep an eye on the time. This is a 15 minute match here compared to a 40. And there we go, more Panzergrens being brought up to the front line. So those mortars are just doing a nutty job here. Constant explosives. I think you need a bit more just Panzergrands to really push through because yeah, that's a lot of mortars. I mean, it's best bet to try to keep them all spread out as much as they can so they don't get all stunned up at runs. MG 42s stunned up the range of support, so he did just get strafed by Spitfires. I think the Spitties are coming around for round two. Oh, oh I, I, maybe not. And that's just a crazy fight over the factory. Oh, well, soon to be not really much of a factory anymore. A lot of it has been destroyed. There we go. The boat force out here is line of sight on the OP unit. On the artillery calling, it's going to be forced to retreat. And that's a good damn position for the Bofors, yeah. And the Firefly's getting hit, but he can't return fire. He only has AP shots. And the nice thing, though, is that he does have 77 rounds of ammunition. Which, you know, that's, that's a lot. You can kill a lot of tanks with 77 rounds. But that nerf to the Firefly definitely hurts it quite a bit. Because it's no longer the... Uh, but it's still a pretty damn good tank for knocking out other tanks, but in this scenario where there's no tanks to shoot, it's pretty useless. And Blue Force really hasn't this. Okay, there we go. Yeah, you have one honey shirt. So one tank. Never mind, it just got rocket launched. And you've got a P 47 Thunderbolt. Dropping bombs. And we are now into phase B. And that Firefly A is just keeping out back. It's really done nothing. It may have just been better not to purchase it. Yeah, it is a risk you do run as Trophy SS because it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Murphy's Law. When you buy the Firefly, you, you don't need it. There's nothing to shoot. But if you don't buy the Firefly, the enemy's going to bum rush you Shermans off the start. So, you know, it's a, it's a lose lose situation. It seems like Blue's making some good progress down below, and they are gaining a plus one point advantage, already a 700 point lead almost. And we've got the artillery pieces, the good old 105s, if they're ridiculous, 4 kilometer range. They're gonna get ready to start firing, but we've got a lot of artillery, Jesus Christ. We've got not one, not two, but three 25 pounders, and not one, not two, but three twins carriers. So really bringing in the Royal Artillery this match.
And if that much artillery, it's just going to be hard to do a standard infantry assault. Really, I think for Redfall, they need to get some sort of tank assault rolled in. Probably through the middle here. There's not much AT stuff to deal with. As I haven't really seen any other tanks to stop him, too. And if they just spearhead through here, all these guys should be right for the picking. And the bow force wouldn't be too much of an issue. But it seems like he needs to change up the game a bit. They do have a Panzer IV J down below, which is a tank. I mean, it's a decent tank. And a Thunderbolt dropping in bombs. Not killing the heart rank, yo. Does survive. And artillery pinning down the flak in as it tried to return fire. Now, fortunately, these SKs should have better range. Yes, they do. A lot better range than the 25 pounder. And so he's going to be able to be very effective with his counter artillery, as you can see. And you've got a little bit of a push here with a down with the AC. Going to be forced to retreat. After taking some unwanted machine gun fire. Straight from one on the pack 50 there. 50mm pack 38 to be more specific. Now these SKs are definitely helping out quite a bit. Now he even got a resp. Now only that only has the 2.4 kilometer range. And Blue Force is trying to make some sort of I know prodding activity in this middle hand sector here. I mean if they could even for Blue Force, if they managed to push through here, they could circle up top rather easily. I do have some flat guns being brought up. Thunderboat getting completely stunned. That's a lot of AA right now from Red, from both players as well. And they do have a, uh, the Panzer IV J and the Firefly down here. So maybe it should be their point of attack here. Is a few Nazi AT weapons nearby. And that Piat could kill the Firefly. It's, uh, the Firefly is getting close. And oh. Oh, it's, it doesn't have line of sight, yo, as you can see. Only if Firefly moves up top. And that's really silly, moving the Firefly so so front ridge, considering it doesn't have any HE shots. It literally only has one machine gun. And it's a low caliber machine gun, too. And because of that, it gets killed. That probably wasn't the best maneuver. I mean, in this game, if you move up tanks, you want to have infantry in front of your tank and blue Ford's breaking through in the middle here as the artillery is pounding away and they pretty much have his factory almost completely captured and really it's just due to the, the amount of artillery that they have and as we can just see if we just zoom in this is Artillery shots back and forth. See one over the air. I mean, it's may as well just be road or one plane here. Thank God, just I, I just want to take a look again because this game is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. I just want to do a few cinematic shots. Too bad we can't uh, make it so you can, you know, hide the color of the buildings because. Looks a bit silly to see all this blue stuff. It looks like a game of Monopoly. Got a knocked out half track. And some counter artillery over here. As some um, neighbor F 42s. There we go. Some heavy artillery. And SK 1018s are going to be forced to retreat. I believe, I, I, I want to say that's a Road War 1 artillery piece because of the 18. Well, you know, I'm. I'm no expert on German artillery. And Blue Force has got the nice plus one. they got good map control. Very good presence. Just look at all this stuff in the middle. Machine guns, infantry, and mortars, of course. And they're doing this all without really using tanks. So we do have an M10 tank destroyer being brought up. And we've got some lightnings and thunder. Some thunder boats dropping bombs. And this is, is not looking good for Red. They are losing quite a bit of ground. They don't really have the presence. 
And they're really relying on AA and artillery at the moment. They hardly have any proper frontline units defending their front. And blue forces hammer in array of artillery. Jesus Christ, that's... One, two, three, four, five, six, twenty-five pounders. We got one M2 Harwicher. Uh We have some mortars, if we could find them. I don't see them mortars. We've got an M7DDO, my favourite silly looking unit. I think it honestly looks like something that's to come out of a Mad Max movie. You know, it's like giant speakers on the back. It's used to play rock songs or some nonsense like that. But yeah, it's just Royal Artillery ridden the day here for Blue. It's like a pound and ray. And it's going to be hard for Rare to do an attack. Especially an infantry attack, because if they move up, it's going to get pounded. And Blue does, well... They don't have complete ass priorities, we see. The AA is doing a damn good job, and the Messerschmitt's going to be going in for the intercept, knocking out one plane, and he's going to be going around for number two, but... Oh, Lightning gets shot down by the AA. So the Messerschmitt has done its due diligence. Diligence. And then the artillery knocking out neighbor Rafa. We've got more bomber planes here, Thunderboats. And we are in phase C now, so everything goes. And it's a... A line of artillery. And this is really just evolved into an artillery match. So we're going to speed this up because nothing's really going on. Like, Jesus, nothing is really going on. Blue's making a push for factory. And then I'll sort of make some ground at AA, providing a bit of resistance, hanging with the Panzer Grenadiers. NDSK is so our return and fire. Oh, there goes a little scout plane there. We got a bit of a error, I believe. The little P38 Lightning got shot down. And Red Force managed to save up quite a few interceptor planes, which is also important. And it seems like Red's going to be doing an attack up top, which is probably. Yeah, it's the best place to attack. Look how lightly defended this is compared to the rest of the map. And if they manage to push through hard here, can tank down bottom. And speaking of tanks, yet such a lot of Shermans. We got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven Shermans. Two of them being rhinos, five of them being Sherman twos. They're nothing fancy, of course, and not not that great in terms of armor AP compared to yes, Panther G or Panzer Four J or J's plural. Even a Panzer Four H of of map artillery support. And I do find it amazing how they did manage to fit all the radios and stuff for that Panzer IV, considering most other command tanks don't have an operational main gun. But it does make this very useful, because once it's out of ammo, it still functions as a mainline battle tank instead of just a machine gun carrier. And it seems like Red's going to be doing an attack, and they need to do it fast, because Blue's taking the lead by quite a bit. And, yeah, Blue's going in for the final assault. That's just a lot of Shermans. They're not really final, so we've got another 10 minutes, I should say. Very well placed smoke in that gap. Gonna be stopping them from being able to see. And once they pass the smoke, it's like going through a door in Dark Souls. They are going to meet how, and then they're not even gonna do that. Yes, the off map artillery completely stunning up their force. Real good hit here. Jesus, that's like... Almost looks like nuclear blasts. That's some heavy goddamn artillery. And Blue Force still prodding in the middle, but not making too much ground. And we've got the Act Panzer up top. Which, funnily enough, has more armor and AP capability. Which is rather odd for a tank destroyer. And it's usually the other way around. What gun did it have? It must have had... Okay, that's an L-48. And that's, an, that's also an L-48. They're the exact same gun. One of them's more accurate and does more AP, and the other one's less... One's more accurate and does less AP. And one's more... Uh, you, you, you know what I'm trying to say. 
That is peculiar. And the Red Pool's just, just throwing in all the cards. We've got the Stug Four here, the Rest Bright Ray moving up so close to the front line. That's not a good idea. And still, that's a lot of Shermans. And now we got the Wolverines being brought into the fray. J88 dropping this payload. Forcing the Shermans to retreat. And now Orster forced to get back. Blue's problem with the Dalmia. And this this is a rather big assault. Red Force throwing literally everything, including the kitchen sink, into his top hand assault. Same with blue, well really it's a defense for blue, they got M4DDs, more Wolverines, AT guns now. And we just got this massive assault going over the field. Let that move on through. And there is a Panther, and the Panther pretty much outclasses everything else on the battlefield and if the help of Panzer Fours, it ain't just gonna be a lone target because even though it's even though it's a nice big fat heavy tank you really don't want to use it by like so if you still want supporting units and this is a real good push for Red Four now gain the plus one lead but they have they pretty much have to get 2,000 points or about 2,000 points to win it and they're going all in. And oh Jesus, that is just a sultan of some trucks over here. Right through the middle. I mean, it's not going to be the best idea. It's range from orders because I have to get a few rocket shots on this infantry. As we see. And yeah, Red's managed to make a pretty good break up top. Taking quite a bit of ground and now on plus one point advantage. Yeah, so it's just it's a huge concentration of tanks essentially. And the artillery, the off map artillery helped a ton. Because those Shermans were still a formidable force, yet they're not as powerful as this German armor, but in that amount of numbers and still it was rather close range fighting they still could have done a decent job but with them all being stunned up and the good use of smoke and other artillery pieces these guys just came in and finished the job and then Red's making very good progress even down in the center too I mean they're just bringing up tanks and Blue 4 was not ready for tanks. I don't have much AT. Well, bringing up some AT stuff now. It's 56 mil gun. They get 157 mil down here. And there's a few Piats. And the artillery, yes, yeah, so they can they can shoot tanks, but they're not as effective against tanks than let's say infantry. And this is yes, huge concentration. As we're going to the last few seconds of this match. One lone scout guy behind enemy lines. And Blue Force just going to surrender. And honestly, I don't know why they surrendered yet early. If you saw just in, in the last few minutes, Blue was still in the position to lead. Just by the amount of points that they managed to reserve. But maybe that yeah, attack just really blew them out the water. Causing, just, well, causing them to... Uh, not want to fight on. But yeah, that was a pretty damn good attack from Redpool right at the end. Just one giant panzer assault. Just concentrated forces on a flank and gaining quite a lot of territory. And Blue Fall, they did a real good job during the early mid part of that game. Great flies over the factory. They use artillery to its full extent. And you all know artillery is very important, as you can see. Blue Fall running up the entire factory sector because they had artillery. 
but they couldn't gear themselves up for a, you know a tank because they didn't have the proper anti-tank weapons available to them so those those panzers just bucked on right through and uh yeah good match i'm gonna leave it yeah it's been another ragnarok cast i hope you guys enjoyed the video and as usual please just take it easy